hi, Iranian woman here. Uh, it's become very apparent that you haven't been listening to anything that we've had to say for the past two years. But I was wondering if you could just lend me a few minutes of your time in this ungodly hour to hear us now. Meanwhile, AOC and and uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, you know, the girl power left wing Marxist Congress women for the Democrats, they didn't say anything. They're not supporting women who are being slaughtered in the streets in an Islamic Republic. Now, over the weekend, we saw Iran with an unprecedented military attack against our ally, our friend, our only real ally, and the only real functioning democracy in the Middle East, the state of Israel. We saw drones flying overhead in Jerusalem with missiles aimed at innocent Israeli families, aimed at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but they were intercepted mostly by Israel's Iron Dome, by the way, an Iron Dome technology that when it was in its nascent uh, gestation, known as the Strategic Defense Initiative, Joe Biden voted against it because Joe Biden's been against any good idea for the last 50 years. Uh, the Iron Dome protected the people of Israel by intercepting the drones and the missiles, including the Al-Aqsa Mosque at the Temple Mount, one of the holiest uh, locations in Islam. It took Israel to protect an Islamic holy site from Iran. Think about that for a minute. And there's a lot of noise going back and forth about the Biden administration's complacency and complicitness in this attack, advanced knowledge of the attack, a tacit approval to Iran for the attack. We'll get into those details in just a moment. There's an outrageous demand from the people of the world to make Israel stand down and not retaliate, that they must show restraint. And no one's been able to figure out or tell me why exactly they must show restraint. Piers Morgan, begging Israel to show restraint. A good thing Winston Churchill didn't show restraint when London was being bombed. I don't know why there's a double standard for Israel, how they're asked and demanded to behave unlike any other country on the planet when they get attacked by a military aggressor like Iran, you know, a country that's promised to wipe them off the map. But one other angle of this story that needs to be focused on is the people of Iran the great Persian people who have been suffering for 40 years under the religious authoritarian regime of the mullahs. And there are some voices that are now starting to emerge, asking people to look beyond that government and help them with their attempts to overthrow the people who have been keeping them in every sort of bondage for the last four decades. Uh, one Iranian Western influencer on social media has gone viral with this message to the world. Take a look. Hi, Iranian woman here. Uh, it's become very apparent that you haven't been listening to anything that we've had to say for the past two years. But I was wondering if you could just lend me a few minutes of your time in this ungodly hour to hear us now. We've had to watch over the past 24 hours people clambering onto the internet to explain that Iran has the right to defend itself. In what capacity have you distorted this story to make the Islamic Republic the victim? That, that's, that's, I think, what we're most curious about. When we were screaming for the past two years that they were lynching us, where were you? When we were screaming that they were killing Iranian women for not wearing a hijab, where were you? When they were lynching Iranian men from cranes for protesting, where were you? When we were explaining that this is a terrorist occupying force, where were you? But all of a sudden, everyone's graduated from Instagram school of law to say that this is a violation of international law and Iran has the right to defend itself. First of all, you're not talking about Iran, you're talking about the Islamic Republic. What the Islamic Republic does is not a reflection of the Iranian people. We've been clear about what we want, which is peace. Second of all, you may have discovered the Middle East yesterday, but the Middle East didn't start 
existing yesterday. If you want to talk about an act of war, just a few days ago, a federal court determined that the attacks on Israeli embassies and Jewish centers in Argentina were conducted by the Islamic Republic and Hezbollah. That was in the 90s. That was in the 90s. Was that an act of war? How about the terror proxies that the Islamic Republic has created to foster regional instability? What did you think that they were there for? What did you think Hezbollah was there for? Hamas, Houthis, the militia groups in Iraq and Syria. Did you think that they were there to instigate a system of public schooling, education, to feed the poor, house the unhoused? What did you think that they were there for? Is that an act of war? Was October 7th an act of war? Are the rockets that Hezbollah fires into northern Israel on a near daily basis an act of war? And so when these senior IRGC commanders meet up with Hezbollah in an IRGC military base, okay, not an Iranian embassy, and Israel strikes, your response is to say that that is an act of war. If you had listened to us for the past two years, much less the past 45 years, you'd know that Iranians don't want war with Israel. We want peace with Israel. Iranian people inside of Iran have come out and said this over and over and over again. It's you that wants war with Israel. It's your hatred for Israel and your hatred for Jews that's pulling us into a war that we didn't ask for. Have we not suffered enough for the past 45 years that we now have to be used as pawns for your fantasies about war with Israel. Leave us alone. We don't want that. So if you want to support the Islamic Republic in putting Iranians' lives at risk and everyone's lives at risk, they just killed a 10-year-old Bedouin boy for this. Is that what you wanted? Then just come out and say that with your whole chest. Say you support the Islamic Republic in their continued aggressions that put everybody's lives at risk. But don't say Iran. For two years, we asked you to come out and say free Iran. And now you want to speak up to put our lives at risk and say, go to war, Iran. You are no friend to the Iranian people for that. Well, it's incredibly powerful. And uh, she's not just a pretty face, although she is a pretty, pretty face. Uh, that's an important message. And for two years, as she said, the people of Iran have been marching in the streets and protesting over a young woman who was murdered by the police state because a little bit of her hair was showing underneath the scarf. Biden was dragged kicking and screaming to issue a statement. He didn't say anything personally about it. Uh, meanwhile, AOC and and uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, you know, the girl power left-wing Marxist congresswomen for the Democrats, they didn't say anything. They're not supporting women who are being slaughtered in the streets in an Islamic republic. Because, you know, it's not politically cool, man. It's politically cool to be like be like Barack Obama and sort of have a, a third way triangulation over Iran. Because for some insane, and I do mean insane reason, going all the way back to the Obama administration, the Obama, Biden, Jake Sullivan, Susan Rice regime that's been running foreign policy and national security for the Democrats have decided that the way to peace and balance in the Middle East is to elevate platform and empower Iran. Iran. And now we're seeing how it plays out. We're seeing it manifest right now perfectly in this latest attack. It's it's funny. The last oh and by the way, I do want to give a shout out to this woman. Her name I just commented on how beautiful she was, but I should at the very least give you her name. She is a social media influencer. She's on X as well as Instagram. Uh Alicia Laban, it looks like and she is out of London. Uh, she is an attorney, and she is a daughter of Iran, as she calls herself. And it is an important distinction between Iran and the Islamic Republic. The Islamic Republic, whose main claim to fame after they took power in the 70s was to invade our embassy and take our hostages. It's pretty amazing to see these apologists for Iran running in front of a cable news or broadcast news camera over the weekend saying, well, Israel did launch an attack on Iran's embassy. Oh yeah, because Iran really holds embassies sacred, don't they? And by the way, that's a lie. It wasn't an embassy in Damascus. It was well, like like blocks away from the actual embassy. Israel went after the mastermind of the October 7th attacks who was given safe harbor. He is an Iranian general. 
and he was given safe harbor in this military annex in Damascus. That's who they went after. It's like when we went after Osama bin Laden in Pakistan because he was the mastermind of 9-11. Did you hear anybody saying, I can't believe they're invading a sovereign nation, Pakistan, and going after this, this military annex of an embassy of al-Qaeda's operations in Pakistan? No. We found where Osama bin Laden was. We didn't ask anyone's permission. We went in there and we got rid of him. Why can't Israel do the same thing? You know why. You know why. John Kirby, spokesperson for the White House, was on Fox News Sunday yesterday and asked about the fact that we have financed this. Did you know that one month ago, the Biden administration released sanctioned money to Iran? They didn't have to. They didn't have to. We had money that was being held because there are international and American sanctions against the Iranian regime. The Biden administration waived that sanction unilaterally without any vote in Congress, and they gave $10 million to Iran one month ago. Asked about all the money that Biden has insured the mullahs get as they finance terror attacks across the Middle East. John Kirby had this to say. Is it not fair to say, though, that there have been moves by this administration that have opened up cash and other opportunities for them, which we know are fungible in ways that are not helping the Iranian people, <laughs> but are benefiting the elites and people there who chant death to America and you, death to Israel. You and I have had this fungibility argument uh, before. Um, I obviously take a different issue. Uh, I take an issue with that uh, characterization. The the sanctions relief that has come about, or uh, it's not even sanctions relief, but the uh, additional funds that have been made available to Iran due to sanctions relief program that the Trump administration put in place can only be used for humanitarian goods. It doesn't go to the regime. And the idea that the regime was somehow f felt like they were freed up to support these proxies because of that, it just doesn't comport with the facts. But they have been supporting these proxies for with, many, many years. And it comports with their language, though, saying we will use this money in the way that we want to use it. They can't. Well, I hate to break it to John Kirby. He's the spokesperson for the National Security Council in the White House, which is a pretty important job, but it's not an important of a job as Secretary of State. This is Anthony Blinken. I think he outranks John Kirby. And I don't think these two have been talking about this because somebody missed a memo on the fungibility of the money given to Iran. Here was Antony Blinken just a couple of months ago when asked the very same question. What do you say about the argument that money is fungible? So Iran may have known this money is coming and used other funds to help fund this attack that happened. Iran has, ha, Iran has unfortunately always used and focused its funds on supporting terrorism, on supporting groups like, uh, like Hamas. Uh, and it's done that when there have been sanctions. It's done that when there haven't been sanctions. And it's always prioritized that. And again, I come back to the proposition that from these funds have always been under the law, available to Iran to use for humanitarian purposes. There you go. But it's not fungible. It's not fungible, says John Kirby. Anthony Blinken asked about the fungibility. He says, yeah, they always use their money for terrorist attacks. So by all means, let's make sure that we bend over backwards and twist ourselves into pretzels to give a waiver to sanctions that's holding that money from the terrorist regime. Let's just lift it so that that terrorist regime can get the money for humanitarian purposes. Yeah, dudes, since you have halted all domestic oil production and exploration in the United States of America, you have single-handedly driven international oil prices through the roof. Not only has that funded Vladimir Putin's war machine in Ukraine, but you've also given a huge benefit and boon to the Iranian mullahs as they sell their oil to our other enemy, China, who you also want to play footsie with. So they don't need your humanitarian aid, you idiots. All they got to do is keep selling oil that you have made so expensive through your feckless climate policies. Am I the only one who sees this? John Kennedy, senator from Louisiana, also appeared with Shannon Bream this Fox News Sunday and was asked about where the Senate stands on this. Yes. And in the past 60 days, we have seen President Biden uh, go wobbly into his, in his support of Israel. And today, the White House has already leaked to the press early this morning that they're not going to participate in an Israeli response to what Iran just did. Let, let me say it again. 
more sheep is not going to solve the wolf problem. My advice to the president today, for what it's worth, Mr. President, don't. Uh, stop it. Support Israel. Uh, with respect, go to Amazon and buy a spine online. Um, peace through weakness never works. Not with these hard, hard men. Yeah. That might need to be my new ringtone. John Kennedy. Go to Amazon and buy a spine online. Leave it to Joe Biden, though, to actually, you know, he promised to bring us all together. He promised to reach across the aisle and get Republicans and Democrats to actually work toward a common cause. And inadvertently, I think he may have done it because uh, agreeing with John Kennedy is none other than John Fetterman, Democrat from Pennsylvania. Joining us now to discuss Democratic Senator John Fetterman from the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, Senator, what is your reaction to Iran's attack on Israel and how worried are you? that this is the beginning of an open war between the two countries? Well, it, a couple of things, actually. I think it really demonstrates how it's astonishing that we are not uh, standing firmly with Israel and there should never be any kinds of conditions on all that. When a nation can launch hundreds of drones uh, towards Israel, and I'm not gonna be talking about conditions ever. And second, I, I think that also was Iran had to have some fireworks after Israel uh, smoked that Iranian uh, general, and, and I am here for that. <laughs> uh, and I think it's just a matter of theater part of it as well too. And it, finally, it demonstrates how unstable things are and why we need to lean in and stand with Israel. <laughs> I don't know who I like better right now, Kennedy, who is maybe my favorite, or Fetterman. Israel smoked that Iranian general, and I'm here for that. He actually literally gave it the thumbs up. Isn't it amazing how John Fetterman was like this woke Bernie Sanders leftist? He gets into the Senate, suffers from depression, goes to the hospital, gets treatments, comes out, and now he's suddenly red-pilled conservative. I mean, I don't really believe he's a conservative, but he's pretty reasonable on certain issues all of a sudden. And I would only say to Democrat John Fetterman that he should probably take that message that he just delivered to Jake Tapper and what few American people still watch CNN. And he should probably talk to his leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, because last month, actually just a couple weeks ago, we saw him saying this. But in order to achieve a two-state solution, the reality is that things must change. Right now, there are four, four major obstacles standing in the way of two states. And until they are removed from the equation, there will never be peace in Israel and Gaza and the West Bank. The four major obstacles are Hamas and the Palestinians who support and tolerate their evil ways. Radical right-wing Israelis in government and society. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. That was Chuck Schumer speaking on behalf of the Democrats. He's the highest ranking Democrat other than the president. And he is telling the world that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and so-called right-wing Israelis are pretty much just as bad as Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. I mean, the conditions and the throwing Israel under the bus, Senator Fetterman, it's happening in your own house there. Talk to your guy about it. And how is this all manifesting here in the United States with the radical left marching on the streets of American cities, tearing down posters of hostages that are still being held? Could we pause for a minute and remind everyone that American and Israeli hostages are still being held over there while Biden plays footsies with the terrorists? While that's going on and while these marches are going on on our college campuses and our streets, uh, we caught whiff uh, from the free press who get captured this video of a training session for woke American leftists, all of them white, wearing masks, by the way. I love that touch. Learning how to properly chant death to Israel and death to America. So I'm going to teach you a chant in Persian that you can use if you ever encounter those Zionist freaks, whether they be Iranian or whatever, all right? <laughs> now, I don't drink margaritas, but we all know what a margarita is. We all know what a bar is. So you're going to say, Marg Bar. Marg Bar. Marg Bar Israel. 
I'm going to let you see the rest of it, but understands that they were all chanting that with such fervor and excitement and gusto. And then they said, what does that mean? They, they, which is, by, by the way, perfect for these left-wing extremist radical protesters who show up wherever their Facebook group told them to go show up because they don't have jobs. You pay their salaries through benefits and maybe their public employee union members. Uh, so, yeah, I'll chant whatever you tell me to chant. I don't care. What does it mean again? Now he's going to explain what it means. <laughs> it can mean death to or down with. So, we can, can we get a <laughs> Mark Bar Amrita? We can get a Mark Bar Amrita. Yes, we can. Oh. Mark Bar Amrita! Mark Bar Amrita! Mark Bar Amrita! Mark Bar Amrita! Thank you. Yeah, good job, the free press, getting that to us. That's Joe Biden's America. That's the healing. Remember when Charlottesville was the reason that Joe Biden had to run for president because he didn't recognize who we were anymore? This is who we are now under Joe Biden and under his weakness.